Hello, this is Geraldine Wilkins. I'm so glad you're here. I want to share with you 10 steps, 10 stress-free steps for machine quilting. You know, sometimes we just work on autopilot, and but even when we do that, we still have steps. What is your process? It might be five steps, it might be 15 steps, or it might be 10. I have 10 steps, and I want to share them with you because I don't want machine quilting to be stressful for you. What makes machine quilting stressful? Anything that we do becomes stressful when we don't have a plan, when we don't have a plan with clear, actionable steps. So that's why I wanna share these steps with you because I want you to go about the process of thinking about why is machine quilting stressful? Let's look at each step. Let's look at my 10 steps. Here are my 10 steps for stress-free machine quilting. And I say they're stress-free because once we know what the steps are, we can create a plan to either do them successfully by learning how to do the steps, by practicing the step, by improving the step, or getting help. And once we go down that road, it becomes less stressful. But we have to know what those steps are. And here are my steps. The first is fabric preparation. How do you prepare your fabric? Believe it or not, once you start to machine piece a quilt top, you are already setting a direction for your machine quilting. I wash and starch my fabric. I starch fabric because it minimizes fabric movement. It improves fabric cutting and it improves machine quilting. Second, piecing accuracy. We need good seam allowances and we need to know the seams are not going to open during the machine quilting process. That the machine piecing did not create big and bulky seams that make it difficult to stitch through when we're machine quilting. The next on the list is pressing method. Pressing to one side, pressing open. Many patterns have directions on how to press to minimize thick seam allowances. Pay attention to that. Sometimes pressing a seam open is the best choice, especially for a quilt like a star quilt where many seams are coming together. The next thing is batting selection. Have you taken time to learn about batting? Batting loft or thickness? How easy it is to stitch through a certain type of batting? Wool, cotton, synthetic batting? Go and test out batting. See which ones you like and how they respond to machine quilting. You need to have this information so that you can be on the road to a successful machine quilting project. You want to have consistent results. And consistency happens when we have test and we know the outcome. We know the result. We know that cotton batting in these circumstances produces X result. You want to know, you don't want to guess. The next thing is quilt stabilization. That quilt sandwich stabilization is so important. Why is it important? Especially if you're a sit down machine quilter like I am, that quilt gets moved around over and over during that machine process and we can machine quilt a quilt for hours. And so you want to make sure that it's stabilized through various methods and you want to learn some of those methods. Do your research. Will you need stitch in the ditch to help stabilize the quilt? Like for quilts with bias seams. Another thing to consider is when you are basting that quilt sandwich. That's part of the quilt stabilization. When you baste a quilt with pins or spray basting or other methods, that will determine how the fabric will shift during the machine quilting process or not shift. I like to use spray basting. If you do, make sure you do it outside and protect your health. Spray basting minimizes quilt movement. 
If you're a pin baster, learn the different ways of pin basting. That's important. The more you learn about quilt stabilization, the more success you will have. Find the method that works for you and reduce stress in machine quilting. What's the next step? Choosing and selecting a quilting design. This may be a weak point for you. You may not know, well, what machine quilting design will I, I use on this quilt? That comes with practice and time. A lot of us want easy, easy machine quilting. But truth be told, it's actually a little, it's work. But part of that work can be reduced along with the stress if we find machine quilting designs that we know how to stitch. And the only way we know how to stitch it is if we practice. Determine what machine quilting design that you know and you feel comfortable quilting and that you want to practice to get better at because sometimes you have to practice on real quilts. How densely do you want to machine quilt? That will be determined in part by your batting selection. Another reason why you need to know more about batting. Some battings require that we stitch no further than three inches apart. Others allow us to stitch eight inches apart. Do your research on batting. It will help you in your quilt stabilization and in selecting a machine quilting design. Another aspect of the machine quilting design that can cause stress is now that I've selected a a design, where do I place it in the quilt? How do I place it? What direction? What is my quilting machine quilting plan for the specific design? Once again, practice, practice, practice. And if you've been watching some of my videos, you know that I always say practice on pen and paper or whiteboard then practice on a quilt sandwich. Ladies, I have to tell you, and gentlemen, it requires practice. It does. You can't get around it. There's just no way around. If you want to reduce stress when it comes to selecting a machine quilting design, implementing that design in your project, you need to practice on smaller pieces. The more you practice, the more confident you will become. And next, Thread, color, and weight. How do you select thread? Cotton, poly, synthetic. Which ones do you like? Do you like a glossy finish, a matte finish? That's all personal preference. Do you want the thread to blend in with the fabric and not overpower the beautiful piecing design that you took hours to stitch? Or do you want the machine quilting to be the star of the show? You want to show those beautiful quilted feathers or other designs on your quilt top. Again, personal choice. You need to practice ahead of time. It's important to figure out what threads you prefer. Do you prefer a matte cotton finish? Then start stitching small quilt sandwiches with that thread. What weight will help you tell the story that you want to tell? Do you want a heavy weight thread where you can see that thread on the surface of the quilt? Or do you want a thin, light thread that just blends in with the fabric? It's second to the piecing top design. You just want it to be a little surface texture on the surface of the quilt. The only way to know what to select from quilt to quilt is to practice on smaller pieces so that you can see the results ahead of time. I know this sounds like a lot of work, but I'm telling you, if you do this, you will gain more confidence in selecting thread and thread weight. You will be more comfortable in that process and you will reduce stress when it comes to machine quilting. 
and you'll start to experiment with different thread colors. And lastly, which I've already talked about, is practice, practice, practice. We need to practice. Practice is important. We can't get around practice. Anything that we want to do well and have successful outcomes require that we learn and practice that, so that when we are ready to implement it in that important project, we're good to go. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to practice all of these steps and develop your method. The more you practice, the more it will become second nature. You will just do it. It's just like learning to drive a car. When you first learn to drive, you were nervous sitting behind that wheel, pressing on that gas pedal and not pressing on the brake too hard. Now you don't even think about it. You just get in the car and you start driving. The same thing will happen here. In the beginning, you will be a little bit nervous, but as you develop those skills, as you use those skills, it will become easier and second nature over time but you must practice. Just like a musician that practices scales and practices before performance, you must do the same. Reduce stress with a clear action plan. Reduce stress by implementing those steps one by one. Reduce stress with practice. They may not be your steps, you might Incorporate a few more that I don't have here, or some of them you won't need to do at all. It's up to you to decide what steps you need to reduce stress, to enjoy machine quilting, and have a successful outcome consistently on every quilt you make. I want to share with you another video, three things to avoid in machine quilting. These are mistakes that we make that impede our growth as machine quilters or even prevent us from starting to begin with. See you soon.